Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Marcus Mora and Chad Fotheringham coming to you here from uh, California. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Now, today, you are all here to hear from Ryan Hart. <clears throat> our, uh, he was just awarded our fastest growing franchisee at our 2017 conference. And so Chad and I are very excited to introduce him to you guys. Chad and I just want to take two seconds to tell you really what it is that we do uh, Chad, so take us back in 2007 when you guys started the business uh -huh. and tell us about the two business models that uh, we really have perfected since 2007. Yeah, well, I think to, to understand, when, when Toph and I first started Amada Senior Care in 2007, he'd already been in this market for about 10 years. I had worked for Pfizer Pharmaceuticals for about 10 years as a sales rep and eventually kind of worked my way up as a national account manager. And he had run his own nurses registry where he had nurses and caregivers that he'd put in the home. So he had been doing that for 10 years. Um, we got back together. We played football together in college, so we kind of caught up for lunch. And at lunch, we got to go visit one of his clients who was on hospice, and we spent about an hour and a half there. And after that experience, I I, am, I exited the house with Top and just told him, I, I said, you're you're lucky. You uh, you have a really cool job. You get to make a real difference in people's lives. And the caregivers that you put in their homes are, are life-changing. And a week later, he invited me to lunch again, which was not common because we usually catch up every, you know, three, four, five, six months. Uh, and he invited me to start Amada. And at that point, we, we focused solely on non-medical home care. And, we, and he'd already been doing that, and he understood it. He'd been in the market for 10 years. Um, but three to four years into Amada, we actually expanded our service where we started offering assisted living placement services. And we started doing that because a lot of the people that we came across that needed home care, at a certain point, they would need to transition and go to a different level of care. They need to go to an assisted living or a boarding care or adult family home or memory care facility. And so we set up contracts with the different boarding cares and assisted living so that when we positioned them and helped them find that place, that there was, uh, you know, that there was financial incentive and they were able to pay us a referral fee for doing that. And what we liked about that was we ended up doing what was right for the client. We, when, we, when you're only a home care company, you have a tendency to push home care and to focus on having caregivers in the senior's home. But when you have these two different models, you just end up assessing the patient on a regular basis and doing what's best for them um, and, and getting them into the right environment, whether that's in the home. And the large majority of people want to stay at home with the caregiver. But there's also people who, based on budget, care needs, and socialization needs, may want to be in a facility with other seniors and other levels of care. So those are our two major um, uh, areas that we actually provide services in. We also offer technology packages for families using pressure sensors and infrared sensors. Uh, it's a very small, small part of what we do. But the, the main two areas are home care and assisted living. So that just gives you a brief understanding of you know, we basically find these caregivers, we hire them, we train them, uh, we go out to the hospitals and skilled nursing facilities and we tell the, the discharge planners that we provide this service. They give us the referral, we put the caregiver in the home and we kind of make that match and, and, and we manage that process um, or we help them find an assisted living. So those are the two main services we provide. Is that enough, Marcos, or do you want me to get a little deeper? No, that's perfect. That's perfect. And, and it, we're going to talk a little bit more about that with Ryan as well, talking about his territory, how he's doing those services there. Um, but again, we always want you guys to know the reason we started franchising is by 2011, Chad and Topper were already doing 11 uh, or, or I'm sorry, we're already doing $7 million in gross revenues. By 2013, it jumped up to 8.7. And this is the same model that we're uh, helping our franchise partners build in their territories. Uh, and real briefly, uh, the way we differentiate our system is we really go after the payers. A lot of you have seen this presentation before, but just know that uh, we really do differentiate ourselves from the rest of the uh, senior care market. Uh, we're not just about, we have loving caregivers. We really are about finding a solution uh, for seniors. We advocate for them to make sure that they receive the best care possible. And we also service those payers, the, the payers that are paying so much money throughout the nation uh, for home care. Yeah, and I'll, I'll just comment on this slide. As you look at it, you'll see a lot of people confuse us with home health or hospice services. And we actually partner and work very closely with home health and hospice, but we are not home health and hospice. You'll see that the two of the biggest payers out there are Medicare and Medicaid, 
um, as well as employer paid health insurance. Those areas focus on the medical side of the client, which in many cases means putting a physical therapist or a nurse in the home through their Medicare benefit. We specialize in all the other payers, which is the VA, cash pay, where people pay, pay for our services out of their pocket. Uh, workers' comp insurance actually pays a lot of times for people who have been injured to have caregivers in their home and take care of them, as well as long-term care insurance. Um, and we've really specialized and niched our services with, with, within these payers that are not your traditional Medicare, Medicaid, employer-paid health insurance cert, um, type payers. And the reason we did that is when I was in pharmaceuticals, um, the most fluctuation, you know, you could have really good years. If you were doing a lot with Medicare and Medicaid, the, the rates that they reimburse could be good, but they could just out of nowhere come up with a rate change and your business could tank overnight. We didn't want to be tied or constrained to what Medicare does or doesn't do. So we built a business around these other payers that are a lot more stable and in, in many cases are more profitable, um, you know, long term. Uh, we are now dipping into to Medicaid benefits. A lot of the states with the Affordable Care Act have changed. And there's a lot more Medicaid dollars that are out there, and in many cases those Medicaid dollars are going to caregivers. And so in some cases we, we do see that we are dipping into the Medicaid, but that's usually is more of a, uh, it's kind of a, a side benefit and a side strategy um, that we put into place. So that's kind of where we're at. And, what I'll do is I'll kind of, I think what's best, you, you kind of have a general understanding of what we do and how we do it, but I'm going to actually turn the time over to Ryan. Ryan is uh, one of our fastest and best growing franchise uh, uh, partners. He's done a phenomenal job. Um, he's an ex-striker rep, and he uh, actually was just awarded at our, at our franchise conference in February, the fastest growing franchisee. Um, he is, he's done a really nice job of building his business, and I think what we'll do is we'll turn the time over to Ryan and have him talk a little bit about his experience, as well as potentially have uh, him answer questions from you guys. Thanks, Chad. Can everybody uh, hear me okay? I mean, from your end anyway? Yeah, yeah, you're coming out loud and clear. Okay, great. Yeah, so I, I worked for, um, I worked in MetDevices for about 10 years, um, most recently for Stryker. I ran a, a fairly small team in the reconstructive market here, um, but when I started the territory, we were doing about three million. And uh, by the time I, I quit last year, um, uh, we were up to six and a half million in uh, in sales. So you know, I've had some some great success in the in the medical device field. Uh, I worked for Zimmer for a stretch as well, if that means anything to anybody. But um, so I I talked to my wife about this kind of mid last year, and we thought, uh you know, it looks a little bit too good to be true, and, you know, what are we going to do? Um, I was kind of on a transition out of the medical device. We had a lot of weird stuff happening with contracts here. Um, so we started digging deeper and deeper and, and found that it was just a really, really good fit for, for my personality and then my, my experience. And then, I mean, I encourage everybody, if they even have a, um, a thought of getting into the Amata family, to fly out and do a discovery day because that was, that was the deal breaker for us. We were researching a bunch of different things and a bunch of different companies, you know, quite honestly, for home care. And these guys, you know, just blew us away. So um, I really encourage doing the discovery day. Um, you know, I, I do have an advantage. My wife is a financial planner, so she does help me with this. She actually sells long-term care insurance. So she can help me kind of navigate some of these things. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, just the, the family the family life change has been great. Um, I'm not getting called out to do hip fractures at 3 a.m. You know, I have yeah, a, right. I have a I have a really good staff now. I have two uh, two girls that have you know fifty something years of experience together in, in geriatrics, and then and then in the home care business, I have them working full time for me now. Um, so I can really delegate a lot of stuff, and and you know I'm still out in the field selling every single day. I have a presentation today and to a big hospital system. Um, so I'm still out there every single day, and I don't want anybody to get the idea that it's a cakewalk at all because it's not. You have to work really, really hard, but it's so incredibly rewarding. I mean, every single house that I walk out of, when the people are, are hugging you as you're walking out, I mean, it's just the most rewarding thing in the world versus standing in the OR, you know, getting screamed at by a, by a orthopedic surgeon all day, which is kind of my old life. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's just kind of my, my Hey, Ryan. Quick. Yeah. Now tell us about... Um... So how long how long uh, have you been officially running the business now? 
Okay, so good question. I opened my doors in October of 16. Um, you know, they kind of consider the first month a bit of a wash uh, because you're just getting your feet wet. You know, you're getting your license has just come in or if you, if you even need a license. But uh, so for all intents and purposes, we'll call it November is when I really kind of hit the ground. Um, really running and uh, and then so it's been nearly what four months five months now yeah okay and um, you know some uh, sometimes that you may get this question too but I see some folks on here uh, that we've been talking to for some time and one of the questions I get is do you need a partner to do this you know how many of your franchisees are single operators how many of them are partners um, and uh, we were just talking to uh, Kevin and Greg, who are out in uh, in Michigan. And Greg says, there is no way I could have done this without uh, Kevin. Now, he just adamantly says, there's no way you got to have a partner. So tell us about, you know, these, these last five, six months. Um, what do you, you do have Juliana, who is also helping you in the business, but... How would you qualify that partnership, and what would you say to folks that are single operators or folks that are coming into this as a partnership? So Juliana, my wife, does not. She she actually really doesn't help me at all. I'm I'm by and large the the sole operator. Um, you know, she came in and she went to Discovery Day because we thought it was important as a couple um, with twin girls uh, to make the decision together. But she has been focused 100% on her job. Um, let me back up a little bit. So. Um, last year, I was slated to stay with Stryker until the end of 2016, and I actually had to quit a month early because I got so busy so fast. So I've been running the business on my own, completely on my own, and this means hiring caregivers, uh, doing the books, everything until um, just early this year when I hired the two girls. So I, I really feel rewarded as being a sole operator. Um, yes, it would be nice to have a partner and to have people that, you know, we could bounce stuff off of each other. But, you know, I hired two girls and, and they basically can do a lot of the groundwork for me. And then I go in and kind of get the low hanging fruit or do the big presentations. We have a big, um, you know, presentation today at a hospital system. Um, so I, I chip in for that. And then other than that, I run the business and, and I'm out making sales calls, you know, pretty often. But I still do a lot of interviewing and stuff like that. I just, my, my thing is, is to bring in a partner, you know, you're splitting the profits. So you got to figure that no matter what. So if you have someone, if you need the money for an investment, then yeah, okay. Um, but but I, I feel the most rewarding thing in the world is just being a sole operator, quite honestly. Yeah. And uh, Chad, you had a different experience, right? Because you and Tafa started as a partnership. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think I here's the thing is I've seen, um, but I think what, what Ryan said is true is, we also had to support two families, yeah. and so we had yeah. to grow twice as fast. And like you know, could we split up areas of responsibility? Yeah, we could, but the workload is is double for two people. You got to bring on twice as many caregivers and bring on twice as many clients. So yeah, I I think that probably the hardest time is the first six months, from what I've seen as a single operator, uh, because the first six months, and I don't know, Ryan, you can you can chime in on this, but um, the first six months you're learning. You're going from usually a job where you have about an 80 degree focus to now all of a sudden you have 360 degrees of focus. You have to recruit caregivers, train caregivers, hire caregivers, go do sales, which for me was kind of my comfortable area. I, I didn't mind doing sales. I'd always done sales. But it was all those other things, learning how to be the HR director and the person who hires, fires, trains, yeah. as well as doing QuickBooks and doing your billing and your payroll and your scheduling. Um, it, it was just for me that first six months kind of like learning and looking at the whole 360 degrees and having to become the specialist in all those areas. Mm -hmm. After that, it kind of, I don't know, what do you think, Ryan? The, like, how was that hard for you to kind of go from one focus to everything? And then how long did it take you to really kind of learn that stuff? Uh, and now you've hired someone to kind of help you with that, right? Yeah, yeah, two people. But, um, but yeah, no, totally agree. It's, it's you're getting a 360 degree involvement with with your business at that point because it is your business I mean bottom line and and you really do have to learn how to do all these things like I'm terrible at hiring people I there's no way no two ways I'll, I'll say it and so I hired a girl that's been a caregiver for you know 10 plus years and she hires all my caregivers now but you know with that you, you lose profit so you have to you have to really kind of focus on where your strengths are mine's always been in sales of course um, 
I'm not great at running the books, but I've learned how to do it and be efficient at it. So, um, yeah, no, I, I agree with you, Chad. It's, um, it, you know, backing up a little bit too, my demographic's pretty small. Um, I only deal, my, my, my total territory is only about 350, maybe 400,000 people. So we're, we're, I'm, not, I'm not a humongous territory, and it's really landlocked too. So we have nobody around us. It's, it's just centered in that area. So we have a small geography that, that is basically wide open for the taking. And, and I'll, I'll tell everybody on the phone right now, if you join Amada versus another company, um, you're going to crush the competition. You, you're just going to crush everybody out there. I have, I have 23 other agencies in my, in my territory, and we are absolutely killing them right now on every facet of this business. So, um, you know, it's, I, I truly feel like it was the best decision with, with this company, with the technology and everything you have to offer, the expertise in the long-term care insurance, which I'm really starting to, to expand on. Um, it's, it's, there's just, you, there's no way to really lose. You, if you get out there and, and are diligent about doing your job and, you know, most importantly selling, you gotta, you can't sell very well, then find it, find someone who can. And that's what they did in San Diego and look how great it's been for them. So, you know, it, uh, I, I think, I think all in all, it was an ideal, ideal decision for, for myself and my family. That's, that's cool, Ryan. Thank you for that. Hey, tell me about, <clears throat> you were just talking about crushing it. Now, I remember, and we get a lot of, the, we get this question a lot. I remember when Chad set me down, 2011, 12 or so, we were talking about franchising this business. And he put up, you know, the differentiation, right? Long-term care insurance, the VA. And, 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 and I, I said, well, I said, come on, man. You're telling me that the competition is not doing this, that they're, they're not going to every single hospital that I'm going to go to, that they're not, you know, I, I, it didn't, it didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So six months in, talk about how, how is it that you, you're able to crush it? What, what have you noticed about the competition in your market? Maybe that's, maybe that's a better question. Yeah, good question. So most of the competition out there, they have marketing people, so to speak, but these marketing people are terrible. I mean, they just are. And I don't think that they, you know, I don't think that they pay these people very well. Not that I pay mine a ton of money, but, um, but I don't think that they pay very well. So they get, you know, sub quality people. But most importantly, the thing that I've really driven my business on is, is caregivers. And I started hiring caregivers at a buck or two more an hour than any other place in town. And I actually tell every single client that. So that's, that's kind of first and foremost. I focus my business around the caregivers because they're the ones that will completely make or break your business. Cool. Um, and I've had situations already where, you know, we've had to fire people because of this or that, but, um, but I've really centered my business around that. And now I'm expanding out. So now I'm expanding to hospitals. We're doing a lot of hospital stuff. Um, now we're doing a ton of long-term care insurance. I did, um, I did uh, just started a campaign last week, actually, a TV ad campaign um, where we're, we're literally talking about being the long-term care experts on every single one of the commercials. And so when you say that, and people, you know, not a ton of people, I think only, what is it, 12% of the, of the nation has long-term care insurance? Not a big number, but they come out of the woodwork to come talk to you. And if you center your business around something like that, then there's just nowhere to go but up. And then we have other things. We have the technology. We have, you know, the VA. We handle the VA stuff very well. well you know, in Nevada, we can't do placements into, into assisted living. So that's something I've had to circumvent. But That's right, you know, yeah. Yeah, so, but, but, so I just do all home care. That's all I do. And I focus my head around doing home care sales every single day or, you know, telling them that maybe my, my service isn't right, maybe we need to go look at some assisted living. I don't, get, I don't get paid for it, but I still do it because that's what's right for the client. And then I told my, I told my staff the other day, you know, as long as we do the right thing on a day-to-day -day basis, we are going to continue winning. And that's all it is. I mean, it's just, there's, it's, it's dirt simple. It's, it's nothing fancy about it. You know, you just go out there, you make friends, you get referrals, you, you, you build your referral source base. And pretty soon, I mean, you know, I, I can barely handle the growth I have now. And these TV ads have just started. So I can't imagine what's going to happen. We're going to have to hire, you know, 10 new people a week just to sustain the growth. So um, that's how I've done it personally. Um, I spent probably a little bit more money on, you know, going to mixers and, you know, joining social groups and stuff like that. Um, 
and then advertising than most people. But I'll tell you what, it's been, you know, there's nobody out there that doesn't know who I am now. And I'm quite frankly, scaring all the other home care agencies out there. I love it. I love it. Now I've got a hand raised by uh, Michael Antonelli. So uh, Michael, we're going to try to unmute you. Now what you'll need to do, Michael, is uh, to put in your, your code on your computer so that you can unmute yourself as well. Uh, let me see if I can send you the code, but you, you should be able to see it on there. But you are unmuted, Michael. You just have to be able to enter your code in to be able to connect your computer to your uh, to the GoToMeeting so you can ask the question. Uh, while you're doing that, Michael, I've got some other questions here typed in. Thank you so much, guys, for typing these in. So, Marco, um, if, you if you don't mind, let me um, let me just stop you for one second. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Mike Mike Antonelli can hear me. Um, I worked with Mike for the last four years in, uh, at, at a hospital. He's a, uh, he's a he's a good buddy of mine. So hopefully he doesn't. No way. Bad. Yeah, he doesn't. Hopefully he doesn't bag on me too much. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Michael, we we've, we've got uh, we got the inside scoop on you, buddy. That's cool. Okay, so now I also have. Um, so Tim had a couple of questions. Um, what was the biggest challenge in getting the business started? And then he says, was it, and I think you were saying is, was it initial customers or what was the biggest challenge you found? Um, I would say the financial part is definitely challenging. Um, we did it a, a little bit differently than most people have done it. Um, but that's, that's a big, that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. Um, and then I don't think getting the customers was, was that challenging. It was just learning how to run a business because, you know, working for a big corporation, you know, your HR, your payroll, all that stuff is handled. You don't think about how much time that consumes. So learning to run the business and then in, in Nevada, our licensing process, uh, licensure process is pretty tough. So that was, that was challenging as well. Now tell me about, uh, and, and Stephen also has that question about um, what, what was really your initial investment um, and how much in reserves did you feel comfortable having uh, to, to be able to, to um, well, he says, let me read it. What was your initial investment and how much in reserves did you require to operate currently? Um, it's okay that I answer that honestly, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. Um, so, so, so far into this business, I've put in um, nearly ninety thousand dollars, and that's that's for everything. So now I, I have I have two wrap cars, I have an office, I have um, thirty five caregivers, and then two full time office staff. Um, and I am I am now not only breaking even, but I'm actually making money every month. So now I can start paying that that money back. So. I had uh, 200,000 total available that I could draw from. Um, so I had about a hundred and something thousand dollar cushion. Got it, perfect. And is that 90, are you including the franchise fee in that as well? That's everything up to date. Everything said and done, okay. licensure, everything. Perfect. Um, hey, and uh, Nate, uh, Nate asked, uh, you mentioned you had run a conventional business, uh, and you're now doing more hospital stuff. I think we know when you said that you, know, you did a lot of long-term care insurance, and now you're working with with, uh, with doing a lot more hospital stuff. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about your involvement in in mar I think what you meant is you know you're marketing more to hospitals now, correct? We're doing a lot of that. I mean, we market everywhere. Um, my right. sales, my sales girl makes uh, probably. 50 some odd uh, sales calls a week um, and we market a lot to long um, assisted living and independent living communities because we have probably 10 clients in independent living because they need caregivers too um, but the hospital bit is really good if you want to look at expanding your business and then somewhere where no other company is doing it and I can almost guarantee you guys that there's nobody that has the knowledge of the hospital system the Medicare system that Chad Fotheringham does. There's nobody out there. So that's been a humongous thing for me and I've, I've really, I understand the hospital system and, and have a pretty good grasp on the Medicare thing. But, um, but if, you can, if you can really get your arms around that, I mean, 
you can market to these big CEO, you know, C-level executives of these of these hospitals, and then you know if you can get a contract or you know some sort of agreement with a big hospital and they're referring the patients to you, I mean, there's just you can't lose at that point. I love it, uh, Chad. Thanks, Ryan. That's kind words. I owe you lunch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. Hey, and, and this is a question for both of you guys. It's a really good question from Tim. Uh, typical length of time the customers end up being uh, your customer. Uh, I know that somewhat is all over the, all over the, uh, the map, but there is an average that the industry talks about. Uh, so let me ask uh, Ryan, if you will. <clears throat> I mean, it's only been now uh, five, six months, but uh, have you been able to identify an average length of time you have a customer? And then, Chad, you can probably talk about your uh, your, yeah. your ten years of experience as well. Yeah, yeah. I'd say I'd say that question is really situational. Um, you know, a lot of these a lot of these people, I'll go in and and sit with them on their couch and talk about the things, and we'll start them that day. Um, and then some of them are coming out of a um, like a skilled nursing facility or something like that, and they're not going to start for a month. So it's very situational. Um, but I would say most of the time they need the help and they want to get started pretty quick. So if, if you can, my, my advice to everybody is if you can get into their house, you have what, what is it, like a 90% close rate at that point? I mean, there's no reason you should go meet with someone at their house and not get the business. Um, it just depends on when they want to start. I'm waiting on a lady now that's starting um, tomorrow, I believe. Um, that was in an assisted living because she had had to stay at a hospital and they, they discharged her into an assisted living and uh, and she hates the place so she wants to come back home but that's been a month so you know you, you can't you can't put her in the pipeline as a positive you know an, an absolute but you pretty much know you have her if, if if you're the only one she's talked to so I would say Chad you would you agree with me it's very situational yeah totally and I would even say from the you know how long it takes you to bring them on service um, it can be, you know, you can get a call and meet a family and they say, I want, I'm discharging in an hour, I need someone there. Um, once they come on service, the industry averages say that they're going to stay on service for about 12 months if they're a normal client. And if they're a long-term care insurance client, it's 14 to 16 months, which is longer. Yeah, so, and then I work a lot with hospice. It's really situational. Yeah, and then I work a lot with hospice too. So we start those cases and they go two hours a day to 24-7 for four days until the person dies and I mean you just gotta you gotta realize it's the nature of the beast but working with hospice companies is I we've we've worked with countless hospice companies too that's another referral that you always want to get because they they turn from crappy cases into humongous cases overnight and you make a lot of money yeah. until they pass away so yeah it's the average is it's so funny because the averages I give you um, are so it's an average but they're so skewed on both ends of that average you have hospice cases that last four days, but then you have some people who last three years. Um, and then there's everyone in between. And you have a lot of people who will have a hip surgery or, or you know, hip replacement, knee replacement. They'll come back and they'll need it for two months. And then you won't hear about them. And then they come back two years later and you, you take care of them the rest of their life. So it's kind of a, that's a hard question to ask. I gave you the averages. Hopefully you understand the averages. But just know those averages are not your normal clients. Everyone is so different. And, as Ryan said, it's very situational on how long it takes to come on and then how long you have them on. I would say, I would say um, differing from, if, for those of you that are med device or pharma, um, you know, the sales cycles you're used to, this is probably going to make you extremely happy because it's not a two-year sales cycle of courting a doctor or a doctor's office or trying to sell them meds or, you know, for me, it was always trying to sell them titanium stuff. Um, you know, you don't have to them forever if you can get into their house and 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 earn their trust I mean you get the business next day so and and uh, that's actually a good point Ryan take that to the clients but now take to the sales cycle of the referral source how would you equate that sales cycle to your sales cycle selling titanium so um, what I've done what I've done with referral sources is heavily heavily entrench myself into the community. Um, I'm on the board of a, of a nonprofit. Um, I joined a, um, a, a group that's not a BNI group, but it's a, it's a group that refers internally. And it was like $75 a year to join this group. Um, and 
guess what? All the referral sources in town go to these meetings. So I would buy, you know, I'd put a card down and buy them, buy them wine, buy them, you know, drinks or dinner or whatever. Um, just like when we, when, when we were able to have fun in the medical device field, you know, that's, that's, uh, that's exactly how I treat every time I'm social. I'm just super social and I just, you know, make everyone feel good. And so I would say that the referral sources have been probably a little quicker for me. <laughs> Excuse me. And then the other thing I did is my marketing girl, she worked for a um, competitive company for a long time. And so she already had all of the referral source uh, uh, relationships. So that's just been, I mean, that's, that's expanded my business substantially. So you're not knocking on doors. You don't have to knock on doors forever to get that business. So my, my big advice is, you know, within the legal parameters and be careful with that because I did get someone threatening to sue me for hiring a competitive person. But um, <laughs> right. that, was, that was really, that was really a big move for me. And, you know, I put, I put out a fair amount of money per month and took some, took some loss and profit, but it's, it's already paying off in full in like threefold. So that's awesome. Um, Andy, uh, Andy Span, Andy, thank you so much for being on the call with us. Um, he's in the uh, uh, St. Louis market. Uh, Hank, he's asking, what's a reasonable expectation for growth on a monthly basis? Uh, I'll just, I know it's a tough, tough one to answer, but let me just throw that out there. Um, uh, what would you say about that, Ryan? Um, so in my second month in December, I went from like 5,000 in sales to 40,000 in sales. I had like three hospice clients that came on and went, you know, like I was saying, two hours to 24 sevens. Um, and then I got a 24 seven case, which I still maintain um, in December. So my, my, my sales have gone absolutely through the roof <coughs> in a short amount of time. It's dipped off a little bit, but last month, you know, the stack rankings, which you guys are all familiar with, I was at like a 21% stack ranking for last month. March was looking even better. So, I mean, you know, you, you, you kind of dip. It's really pretty volatile for the first six months, I would say. But if you can, if you can set your sights on a, you know, like a, a certain number, like I want to grow 20% every month. And I want to bring in, I want to bring in eight new clients a month. That's my goal. And that's what I tell my people. Um, so with that, you know, you have to hire 16 new caregivers a month. You know, there's always kind of a two to one ratio or roughly that much. Um, so, so the expectations are going to be different for every market. Um, we've lived in this, this area for a long, long time. So I came in and um, before I even got licensed, I was already out talking about my new business. I already had business cards made. You know, I was confident I was getting my license. So um, I was out talking about it. So within my first two weeks, I had two clients already just from friends of friends and um, my wife being a financial planner, you know, she works for a big insurance company. So she has all the insurance agents referring us business now. Um, so, I mean, the expectations are going to be really skewed for each market. I would say take a really hard look at how you're, how you are in your community. If you know a ton of people like we do in this community, um, we're very social people. We have a lot of friends. Um, I would say take a good hard look at that, and that should honestly be able to predict your 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 fast or your slow growth. I mean, I was talking to people last at the conference that have been doing this for a long time, a lot longer than I have, and and they're not even they weren't even up to where, where my numbers were. So it it can really vary, but the thing is not not to be as, as frustrated if it doesn't happen as quickly as it happened for me because you know we just had a really good situation. I feel like we got really lucky, and and I I'm, I'm you know, one of our biggest things is confidently humble, and and honestly, that's that's the way that I'm out there in the community every day is trying to be humble about our growth. And with other with other franchisees around the country, which I talk to all the time, I um I'm just I'm I'm try to be humble with them and let them know what's working for me and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that's cool. I love that. Hey, um, and as a follow up to the hospitals. We get this question a lot, Nate Moreau, this is a really good question. Um, he's saying, you know, a lot of hospital systems, they provide home care. You know, they have a, a home care division. So uh, why, would they, why would they outsource? Why would we be able to call on them? And he's asking you, do you profit share with them? Is that what it is? Are we paying the hospitals money to get the business? Um, so talk about that environment that you're finding there in that Reno market. So, um 
most of our hospitals around here do not have their own home care companies. I would say, by and large, I don't. I, I haven't heard of any any hospitals having their own home care, non medical home care. I mean, oftentimes they'll have home health, but that's totally different, as we talked about earlier. Um, home care. Is, yeah, go ahead. I'll chime in on that. This is Chad. Um, it, it's really dependent on market. In our market, we had two of our large hospitals that did have home care, um, and most hospitals have home health, right? Um, but they, mo I'd say half and half, not even half, I'd say 75% don't and 25% do. Um, but even the, the two in our market that, that did have their own home care, we partnered with them. And we did, a lot of times they can't, they're, they're definitely not as proactive and hungry as we are. So in many cases, they, if they had a hard time staffing a shift, they'd give it to us. And we, we looked at them as a referral source. Yeah, and in many cases, the case managers didn't like them. They, they weren't as proactive as we needed them to be. Uh, the case manager would say, look, I called them, and it took them, they said, I'll be there in a day. And it's like, I need someone in an hour. So uh, we still get, I'd say 20 to 30% of our referrals came from those two hospitals that had their own home care company. I don't look at, I, I don't look at it as um, any, any other, uh, different than any other hospital. We, we can go after them and get business from them. And Chad, you you took the words right out of my mouth, man. I, even with competitive home care companies, that I was getting I was getting overflow referrals in my first or second month because they saw that I was hungry, you know, and they said, "Oh, we, we can't staff this two hour a day case." And I'm like, "I'll do it." So, and, and guess what? Those two hour cases turned into, you know, one of them is, is five hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, that's thirty five hours a week. That's a that's a that's a huge jump. So, you know, don't ever treat always always treat your competition as your friends because you just never know yeah I'll, I'll give you one example our best client our first client we ever got that was really good we got from the hospital home care company hospital owns their own home care um, we kind of built a relationship with them and she said look this person's a pain in the butt you know she's only like four hours a day five days a week within a month of us doing a good job and visiting her and developing a relationship with her she was 24 7 and she was paying a, a lot per hour. All she really needed was just the trust to know that we were like all in to help her out and that we had the resources to go visit her and, and it changed over. That's what home care is all about. <clears throat> Whoever does it best will have plenty of business. Yep, I agree. Let me, uh, let me just take a, a quick break here. We, we're at 1040. We want to go on for probably another 20 minutes. I got a lot of questions being typed in here. I do want to, uh, to ask you to raise your hand. We'd love to get you, your voices on here. Uh, it's really cool because you can ask a follow-up question if you want to. So for those of you who asked a question, if you have multiple on there, raise your hand. I'll unmute you. Um, also, uh, Tim, are you there? I know he is. I am. I am. I had to unmute myself. What's going on? So, hey, just real quick, I wanted to, Ryan was talking about Discovery Days, and it just came to me that we actually have two Discovery Days coming very quickly. Could you just real quickly talk about when the next Discovery Days are? Okay, so, hi everybody, it's Tim Valencia here. I know I spoke to most of you there. Um, our next Discovery Days, I have uh, April 6th and April 11th. Um, we have a, we also have one on the 13th. I hope Stephen Ellis can hear me. I believe Stephen is actually coming. Uh, but those are the three discovery days we have coming. Um, and I will be reaching out to everybody that has attended today to uh, talk about territory views and seeing if we can get you out here for discovery day. Yeah, thanks, Tim. So um, I did want to remind you, if you have not had your territory review or if you have not had your, your if you have not, done the franchise disclosure document review do me a favor uh, Tim is on here looking at the questions please type in um, that you haven't yet Tim will reach out to you to schedule either your territory review make sure that's the right territory number two a review of the franchise disclosure document very important uh, and also we want to start getting in touch with folks like Ryan to have more on one conversations. Uh, so please type in there if you haven't had your territory review or your franchise disclosure document review, uh, let us know there on the questions and Tim will be able to reach out to you first so we can get that scheduled. Um, I've got a, 
Marco, yeah. could, could I chip in there on the tails of that real quick? Um, yeah. So, so I encourage you guys as you get a little further along in the discovery process to reach out to other franchisees. There's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. I think before I bought um, my territory, I think I probably reached out to 25 different franchisees from across the country. And most of these guys, what you'll find are ex-med device, they're ex-pharma, they're ex, you know, some sort of medical. And so you, if, if you know, you're in that business, you have a, you have a wonderful sounding board for that. And there's just quite frankly, not a lot of things that, that the franchise guys can talk about that franchise guys being Marcos and Tim and stuff. They're just not able to talk about some of that stuff. So you can kind of get some straight scoop from these guys. And I did, and I really encourage you guys to do that. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's people who are just like you, who had or have, you know, the, the, the same type of experience, the same earning potential, the same lifestyle. It's, it's huge when you get to talk to, to our franchisees. It makes all the difference in the world. Um, okay, now I have um, a great, great question from, from Brandon. Uh, Brandon James. Brandon James. You know, I don't recognize your name, Brandon. What, what mar tell us just if you type in there what market you're in. I might just start unmuting you guys. Oh, hey, Brandon, you raise your hand. Hang on. Brandon Thompson. Let me unmute Brandon. And, Brandon, what you'll need to do is unmute yourself on your end. And then I'll just have – there you Absolutely. go. Brandon, are you there? Absolutely. Hey, Brandon, what market are you in? So I, I live in Jacksonville Beach, Florida. Ah, and how'd you hear about Amada? So just through LinkedIn, um, I think you guys actually found me, and I've been uh, kind of listening to webinars and you know moving along the process. And and uh, I've got a friend that actually does home health care in town, and I, I actually haven't reached out to them yet. But it's intriguing to me. I've been a med, med device, uh, much like Ryan, for over ten years now. I've done really well, but I've always wanted to own my own business, and I know there, I'm always leaving dollars on the table. The situation that interests me is my dad retired from United Airlines. He would like to go into business. My wife is an office manager at an aesthetic office. So I feel like I've got the team to do it. The, the apprehension I have is I've never run a business on my own. And so the questions that I had is, you know, how, how good has Amada been in the handholding process of, of teaching you those skills, number one? What uh, things, Ryan, and w w what would you guys have done differently from the beginning if you could do it all over again? Uh, and then the, what are the key differentiators from, it sounds like you had 23 competitors. It's a lot of competition. Why are these people choosing Amada versus the competition? Okay, so um, first question was, um, sorry, I'm kind of trying to download a lot of information here today. Um, a lot of questions. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, so, so do the first question again. The first question was the hand-holding process of just, you know, creating a business on your own. Okay. So, um, so they're always there when you need them. Um, I can't remember a time when I didn't get a question answered, but there's so much, uh, you know, territory-specific stuff that you just don't know. I mean, there's, there's, you know, workers' comp insurance. You don't realize you need workers' comp on 35 employees. Now I, you know, I have to I have to get that in order. You know your liability insurance, all these things that come along with running a business, um, business licenses. I have to be licensed here in Nevada for every single county that I work in, and you have to keep those renewed and current. Otherwise, you 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 risk you know getting into trouble. So um, from the local licensure standpoint, that's something that you're going to be I wouldn't say on your own with. But my advice is if you get further into it, like I, I reached out to the guy in Las Vegas countless times, and he was always there to help. So he knew the really territory-specific questions. So if it's not someone from the Mata franchise that's helping you, then someone there locally is, is you know, dollars to donuts, they're going to be willing to help you no matter what. Okay. What was your second? Hey, yeah. So, hey, so Ryan, let me and then uh, chat also just real quick. Hey, you just pointed out something really important. I think that uh, just as big as the value from Chad and Tafa and their coaching team, Ryan can probably attest to this. It is now the franchisees, the these guys who are in their fourth and fifth years, are are now coming back and coaching 
a lot of our newer franchisees, and it's amazing. Yeah. I think I what we're doing is, is more and more we're trying to create infrastructure so that our franchise partners can share best practices. We just created what we call the regional and state huddle program. So from a licensure perspective, like Ryan had mentioned, we're actually now documenting all the licensure process that people in that state have, and we're sharing that amongst other Z's or franchise partners who come in. And even on the regional huddles, which is more performance-based, like KPI-specific, key performance indicator, even best practice meetings and how we share best practices, we now have formal processes. And we're finding that what Toph and I knew is important, but even, I would say for the first six to 12 months, Anything you come across, we've already been across it. We can answer those questions. We'll walk you through it. We give you a lot of training. Half the training we give you, you forget in your first month. And then you start to learn and say, well, and, and we don't even try to teach you everything to the point that you memorize everything when you come to training. We even tell you when you come to training, you're not going to memorize all this. All you have to do is remember, when you get to that point, we have something that will help me, and I need to call the right person, and they will help me through this process. That's our strategy because there's so much. You're looking at 360 degrees now that you're responsible for. You can't remember it all. We can't train it all to you in the first month. So what we train you on is, that, look, here are all your assets. Here are all your resources. When you get to this point, call us, and we'll walk you through it. You call Emily, who's our technology training person, and she'll teach you how to put input a client in the system, how to input a caregiver into the system, how to do QuickBooks, how to create a schedule. So we're always here. But we have to kind of work at your pace. Ryan, I don't know if you want to comment on that. No, I, I, I agree with you, Chad. It, it, I remember my week of training coming out of there, and I had to do my um, I had to do my video that's now on my website. And I was so fried from a week of training that I couldn't even I without <laughs> you coach, I couldn't even do my stupid video. So like I was just I was just fried. I was just drained with information. I mean, you know, you're you're basically learning all about Amada, but you're also learning how to run a business effectively. So I, I would recommend, yeah, just using the franchisees and, and everybody's really willing to help. I haven't talked to one franchisee that has said like, no, I'm not going to help you. So, and I mean, what do we have, 85 locations now across the country? Yeah. Something like that. So, I mean, you have so many resources within the franchisees. And then within the franchise system, I mean, I haven't talked to anybody that's been like, well, no, I, I got to defer you because I, I don't know what's going on. Everybody knows what's going on. And I had a 25 minute conversation, 25 minute conversation this morning with Tafa himself about a long term care claim. And he, he was just like, did you do this? Did you do this? So, I mean, you still can be involved. And I, I've never had Chad not answer his phone when I call. I mean, I don't, I don't blow these guys up. But at the same time, if, if I'm calling, you know, they, they probably know that it's something that I, I need direct help with. And Chad, I think you remember the last conversation you and I had about my client. It was a, uh, it was not exactly a great situation, so but he he had been in the situation and kind of coached me through how to defuse it. And next, my next call was to my client. So I mean, it, it, there's just there there really is help. Like you guys can call me anytime to, um, you know, I really encourage you to reach out before you get into the process. So, um, but yeah, Brandon, to to answer your question, I think that I think that the the help has been amazing. Thank you. Uh, there was a Brandon. There was a follow up. There's a second part to that, right? Yeah. So, so I just two two other questions. One is Ryan, what would you have done differently from the start if you could have done it all over again? And the last one is if you could just kind of name three or four of the top key differentiators of of why they're choosing to do business with you versus the competition. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So, so from the start, um, the only thing I honestly would have done differently is um, wrapped my car quicker. That is the only thing that I would have done differently. Other than that, my licensure process, I was super diligent about it. I was still working for Stryker, so I had the income coming from that. Stryker knew that I was leaving. I mean, I know it's not going to be that situation for everybody, but I was, you know, basically double dipping for several months, so I could kind of sit back and get everything in order, and I was really diligent about it. I mean, I kept extensive files and just had everything really, really well organized. Um, so when I got licensed way quicker than anybody else in Nevada, um, I was going and dropping off coffee carts to the lady at the state office. I mean, really, I, I just, I'm not afraid of greasing people to get what I need, you know, but as far as doing things differently, I personally would not have done anything differently. I thought it went awesome. Um, and then the, the, 
probably three differentiators. Um, number one is being genuine. Just be genuine with everybody you talk to. And, um, and that gets you so far in this business, it, whether it's a referral source, whether it's a potential client, if you're out and about and you know someone, like now I'm getting calls off my car all the time, and every single phone call I, I spend as long on the phone with them as I, as I need to with a potential client, and then the referral source is the same, just be genuine. If you're genuine, you will get, you will get through so much quicker because there are a lot of weird people out there working at these other agencies. Um, <laughs> And then we have we have far and away probably the best technology of any company out there. Um, this Amada franchise um, is so forward thinking on that stuff that you'll find out very quickly that that's the big differentiator. I tell I tell a client that they can log in <coughs> from Chico, California, and see exactly exactly what time my caregiver was there. They can see exactly what they did that day, and they can see exactly what time they left. They can log in from afar through their family portal and see that stuff. I mean, that's that's huge. But I not only tell the client that, I tell the referral source that or the hospital that. Like, we have the capability to do that stuff. Um, and, and most other agencies don't. I mean, seriously, you guys, they're, they're like faxing invoices and stuff, you know, and faxing stuff. And um, everything is handled through our software system. So the technology is, is just a huge differentiator. And then lastly, um, probably my third point is, Become the expert in long-term care insurance because that by far has, has now become my biggest differentiator. And when I'm talking to places like the Alzheimer's Association or um, every single meeting or, or thing that I get to get up and speak in front of, I tell them we're the long-term care experts. And I know it sounds cheesy and all that, but you have no idea what a differentiator that is because no other company out there is doing it the way we do it. Awesome. I appreciate the answers. Thank you, guys. Yeah, man, no problem. Hey, and Brandon, thank you so much for raising your hand. Appreciate you coming on live. Uh, Greg, Greg, uh, Greg, thank you so much for your question. Um, uh, what is Discovery Day like? Or what happens during Discovery Day? Um, uh, Ryan, I don't know if you even remember Discovery Day, but if you give me two cents and then uh, Chatty and talk a little bit about you know how we do it and what we do. Yeah, Chad. Well, what's that, Ryan? The, Chad, do you want me to go, or is he still there? No, you go. You go ahead. You go first, and then I'll I'll um, put in my two cents. Okay. So, like like I said from kind of the get go, um, Discovery Day was the deal breaker for us by far. Um, you, get, you get kind of a sneak peek, kind of more of a sneak peek into what the company does, how it differentiates. But more importantly, you get to meet guys like Marcos. You get to meet the guys like Tim. Um, and, and most importantly, you get to spend a lot of time with Chad and Tapa. And I swear to God, guys, if there is any two guys I'd rather have on my side, it's Chad and Tapa. Um, you know, they're, they're just, they have so much experience. And, and then typically if the weather's nice, you get to go out on a really nice boat in Newport Harbor, too. So, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of information. But I think that everybody is so transparent. And you know, not trying to pull any punches whatsoever. This is what it is, you know. Um, and what we found about Discovery Day is, is we were really vetting the guys at Amada. But what I think what sunk in most for us is that we realized that they were really vetting us, and that was that was huge for us, my wife and I, because you know they're not just going to give a franchise to anybody with a check by, uh, checkbook and a heartbeat, you know. They're really they really vet you out, and if you know if they see red flags that they don't like, like you know. If somebody's super money hungry or something like that, then then you know they may not they may not award you a franchise, and that was that was really big for us because when they said when they called us back and said, "Hey, we'd like to award you a franchise," we were like, "Ah, sweet, we made the cut." So I think that's that's kind of by and large what I got from from Discovery Day, Chad. <laughs> yeah, I'll just I'll chime in, Ryan. I think it's interesting because we try to be overly. Um, disclosive and and overly transparent that day because we are really trying to let you know look here's all the benefits here's all the here's all the risks um, and here's what it takes to be successful you have to be good at sales you have to be able to be administratively sound I mean we were pretty honest like up to up to the point of coming to discover days a lot of times it's Marcos and Tim and it is it, it is to a certain degree us trying to convince you 
that that's not what this day is. If anything, it's us trying to convince you and tell you why you shouldn't do it. Um, and what are the risks and what are the concerns? And to be totally frank, we spend about an hour talking about our company values and we go through every company value deeply and we say, look, if you don't have these values and you don't match up in these areas and, and, and you're not doing the business for these reasons, don't do it because you won't be successful. Brian talked about being genuine. Um, one of our values is, is compassion and charitable. And if you're not genuinely doing this as your first and foremost reason because you like dealing with people and you like, like helping people, if you're doing this because you've heard about 80 million baby boomers that are coming in and that they're going to pay a lot of money for home care and there's a huge market, don't do it. If you, if because you will not be successful. I'm not just saying that because it's like oh touchy feely. I'm doing it from a business perspective. If you don't have your business built on the principles of these values and you're not doing it to help other people and your mission doesn't align with our mission, which is enriching the lives of other people, you won't be successful. The case managers and social workers and people who meet you, they will see through you and they will know that you're not doing this for the right reason. In fact, they're going to test you and give you those two-hour cases and say, hey, Ryan, take this one. See how you do with it. And if you go spend the same amount of time with that two-hour case that you spend with the 24-hour case, they know and they start to, they do that on purpose. They test you. And we kind of actually, when, when you come to Discovery Day, we're trying to like really ascertain, do, do our values match? And does our mission match? Because if it doesn't, you will be successful and it's better for both of us if you don't do it. Totally agree. Hey guys, this is Tim. I have a question from Mike Seep. He just uh, he's emailing me. Um, he's asking how many franchises are there nationwide. Um, another one is uh, what um, what's the difference that uh, Amada has from our competition? Okay, uh, Mike's girlfriend is a social worker and said reimbursement is usually very low here in the Philly area. Uh, what is the fee and what does Amada provide for that? Chad, can you help me with this? Yeah, if I can remember all the questions. Um, so there's like three questions baked in there. I'll, I'll first start with the, um, the Philly market. We actually have some people who are having some success in the Philly market. And actually, Philadelphia has one of the highest Medicaid reimbursement rates. So we actually, in some of our areas within the Philly and, and uh, Pennsylvania market, are, are going after Medicaid. So I don't think client acquisition um, is... I, I don't I don't see that as being an issue. And if yeah. she's a social worker, depending on where she's a social worker, you know, if she's at a skilled nursing facility or a hospital, a lot of times social workers do tend to work on the low-income side. And if she's assigned to the low-income patients, then obviously she's going to see it as being a reimbursement-specific um, problem, when in reality, that's not the market we go after. We're really not the Walmart of home care. Um, will we help other people who need that care and will, will, will we get Medicaid contracts? Yeah, we will because we want to help everyone. It goes to our mission. But we're not the low end spectrum of care and we're not going to like have low margins and pay our caregivers minimum wage and have crappy caregivers giving a crappy level of service. That's just not who we are. Uh, you know, we kind of always look at it as we're the Nordstrom of home care and we're going to pay our caregiver a little bit more. We're going to get better service and we're going to provide a higher level of care and bill a little bit more. So uh, our, our strategy is successful in different markets, and I, I, I think in the Philly area, I'd, I'd have to get deeper into what her experience is as a social worker and why she feels the way that she does. But I can tell you, there, for every one social worker who deals with low-income patients, there's another 10 case managers who are discharging people who have long-term care insurance and, yeah. and, and other things that really cost sensitivity is the least of their issues. That's one of the reasons we go after that market so heavily on long-term care insurance is because they, they're they not as cost sensitive or price sensitive and they stay longer and they're good clients. And we, we build an expertise in that area. Okay, that was one of the questions. There was like two, Tim, can you, did I answer or was there two? Sure, or three yeah, that, 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 that's really good. Mike, I'm gonna go ahead and send you out a recording um, of the program review. Um, I have actually just emailed you about times for a territory review. Um, he's asking, what is the fee? Your fee for your first franchise, Mike, is 48000 okay? And he was asking, what does Amada provide for that? Well, I, I'll, I'll actually let Ryan answer that. I mean, a lot of it is 
um, for that $48,000, you become part of the team, and, and we basically train. We have 11 phases of training that we go through. Um, Ryan's fairly new, so he's in, I think, phase three or phase four right now, and our training and support team continues to support you. Phase one is what's called onboarding, where we do pre-calls to get you ready to come in for a week training here, which is phase two. That week training is where we give you all your different manuals, all your different paperwork, the first day is industry overview where I get very deep into Medicare and how Medicare works. And the reason we do that is not because Medicare pays for our services, but because every single person we get business from, they live in that Medicare market. And we have to understand how they work and how they think. Um, that's industry overview. Then we get into sales and marketing, which is day two. Day three is, is recruiting and HR. Day four is operations. And day five is technology. And then we, we take pictures and record video of you so that you can um, actually, that this picture, the one you're looking at, Ryan, we take these pictures for your websites and do video recordings for your marketing collateral. Um, we have ongoing marketing support, ongoing. We just have a, we have continual trainings. Really, to be honest, our relationship never ends with you. Um, we continue. We had our annual conference just about a month ago, where we had all of our best practices shared. We had three days of training there. Um, we have monthly conference calls. I mean, basically, to be honest with you, um, that $48,000 about covers your cost of our support for you for the first year. And we also spend three days in the field with you coming and working in your market. Um, so a lot of the cost of just getting you up and running and actually getting you through the system is supported through that $48,000 franchise fee. Thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. <clears throat> okay. Hey, Ryan, um, we're, we're really running out of time. Ryan's got a big meeting with his local hospital that he's got to run out to. I, um, what I'd like to just end up with is we do talk a lot about the money, and it's important to make money. That's, that's something that I've always uh, appreciated about Chad and Toffa is that uh, they're not coy. They're not uh, shy about saying we are in this to make a lot of money, but at the same time, uh, it does come back to the big payoff and the reason why we do this. And I, I, I remember falling in love with this business for that, for that reason, that you, the, 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 the more you focus on doing the right thing for the families, uh, the more money you make. So can you talk about these, these last six months? Um, I don't know, an experience you've had with helping a family or something that, that you've come across that, that has just, confirmed uh, why you made the decision you made to uh, to join Amada? Yeah, um, so I, I have something in the area of 20 clients already, which is pretty unheard of, I would say, in the first six months. Um, and I have been personally involved with every single one of them in some capacity. And every single situation has been so rewarding that I, I, I can't even put words to it. I mean, it's just you know, I say I say this business is very rewarding, very rewarding to everybody, but it really, really is. When you're when you're walking out of there, of their house, and you just spent two hours with them, getting them through their long-term care policy, or getting them through, you know, this horrible time that they're in, which most of them are in. You know, mom doesn't want to mom doesn't want to go to assisted living, but she's way too frail to stay at home by herself. So we're letting we're letting their sons and daughters go back to work in in most of the situations. So you know. You, you, you quote them your price or you give them your price or whatever, they don't even bat an eye. You ask them for a, you know, sometimes a $5,000 check as a deposit, they don't bat an eye, they pull up their checkbook. Um, and you just help them through all of these situations that they are quite frankly just lost. So every single situation, and, and that's just, you know, being in someone's house, going to like an assisted living or an independent living community and talking to, you know, the, the executive director of these places and telling them, Hey, yeah, another another home care company is coming into market to you, but guess what? This is what we have, and this is how we differ. And that's how I start every conversation. I'm like, yeah, there's 23 others in my territory, but this is how we differ. And then I say like three key points, and they're like, oh, can we can we have a follow up with our whole staff? And so guess what? Next week we have an in service, and then the following week we're starting to get referrals from these guys. And referrals are everything in this business. So if you're out and about and, and you know, just doing it, if you're at Walmart and you have an Amada shirt on and someone's like, oh, what do you do? You know, you spend 15 minutes talking to them about it. You just be compassionate and caring. That, like Chad said, that's one of our key values. 
if, if you're compassionate and caring and show that to everybody, I mean, you, you, you will win the business. And then in a small town like mine, kind of a good old boy town, I mean, once word hits the streets, it's just, it's, it's like wildfire. I mean, we're, our, my business is spreading like wildfire. People say all the time, oh, we see your cars all around town. Well, guess why? Because we're at these independent living communities. We're at the hospitals. We're at all these places where people need to see us all the time marketing. And then get, we have the car there that says what we do and, you know, the emblem, the branding. Um, I would say the branding is very, very important in your first several months. And so I put a humongous Amada emblem on both of my cars that one, one that my sales girl drives. And we're driving around marketing. We're driving around billboards all day long. So, um, yeah, it's just, I, I mean, I, I would not do anything differently. I would not change anything going back, looking in the, looking in the rearview mirror. It's, uh, it's just been, a, it's been an awesome experience for me and, you know, my wife and, and, and our family. And now we're, we're, you know, already turning profits. And, and that's unheard of. I mean, it, it is. So if it does take longer, don't get discouraged. Be positive. Stay out there. Do your thing. Be diligent about what you do and, and be proud to wear, you know, an Amada shirt. Be proud to put it on your car. Because um, that's what I did, and, and, and it worked really, really well for me. Awesome, Ryan. Thank you so much for doing this call with us. We really appreciate your time. Good luck with your meeting today. Thank you. Uh, can't thank you enough. Yeah, and you guys, whoever's on the call still, please, you know, feel free to reach out to Tim. Tim will put you in touch with me. Um, if you ever have questions, you know, I don't have a ton of time on a daily basis, but I usually try to pencil in everybody that calls or, or emails me. So, uh, you know, I'm willing to help however I can. All right. Thank you so much, Ryan. And for those of you guys who joined us for this hour, thank you for your time as well. It means a lot to us that you're interested in the Amada model, that you take the time. Uh, as Ryan said, please reach out to Tim. Several of you entered in on the question box here that you don't have your territory review or franchise disclosure uh, review. So thank you for doing that. If you haven't yet, we're going to keep the session here open here for a little bit longer. Please type in. Let us know. Uh, it, let's get you on the next steps of discovery. Uh, so please go ahead and communicate with Tim. Tim will be reaching out to you as well, but he'll obviously reach out to those who, who are reaching out to him. So uh, get with Tim. Make sure that you schedule your time to go through your next steps of discovery. And again, thank you so much for joining us today. We'll talk to everybody very soon. Bye-bye.